Welcome to the Bronx Hip Hop Oral History Project. Today is Wednesday, September 11, 2024. I am Pastor Crespo Jr., the research librarian and archivist for the Bronx County Historical Society. Today, I am joined by Alvin Barbour, also known as A1 B-Boy Sasa, a dancer, a burner, a legend in the hip hop world, and the first breaker to be called B-Boy by DJ Cool Herc. Welcome, A1 B-Boy Sasa. Right. Hello, how, how are y'all people? It's A1 B-Boy Sasa, man. Fully equipped to make a backbone flip. Let's get it. Awesome, awesome. You know, that introduction probably didn't do you any justice at all. Would you like to introduce yourself? Well, um, hey, I'm A1 B-Boy Sasa. Um, coined the first B-Boy from, break, from a break dancer. And um, it's weird that I was coined B-Boy at Cool Herc's party from Cool Herc. And, um, you know, so um, that's it in a nutshell. I am the first B-Boy, awesome. A1 B-Boy Sasa. Awesome. We like to start off all our oral histories for this project by finding out who you are and where your parents come from. Can you talk to me a little about each of your parents? Well, actually, you know, um, my pops really wasn't in the picture, but, you know, I knew who he, who he were. But my mother and both of them is from the South, you know, um, around uh, like North Carolina, things of that name. That's, that's where both of them are from. But um, my, my mom's raised me mostly and my grandmother and grandfather. So I did have... Um, <clears throat> I did have a, a man in the household bringing me up because after a while, uh, my mother had let me stay with my grandmother, right? And um, it was weird that when I was living with my with my mom and pops at first before they uh, took me away and, and had me stay uh, with my grandparents, I was staying with my mom and pops on Huntington Street and 7th Avenue in Harlem. And um, I'm actually, and I was born uh, um, in Manhattan as well. You know, I'm from, I was born in Manhattan. But yeah, but that's where I was originally from. Okay. Um, Huntington Street and uh, Seventh Avenue. And then it was weird that um, my mom went to Brooklyn. So I moved her to Brooklyn, but then she, you know, uh, I was too much for her at the time. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, they sent me over to my grandmother in the Bronx. And that's where it all began. <laughs> That's all we all began. Um, but I was on the east side, like in the Boston Road area. Okay. Like I went to a school called 146. And in, in that school, there was a guy who also became uh, known in hip hop as well, uh, Lovebug Starsky. His name was Kevin. He was in that school as well. It was a public school. But then uh, after fifth grade, I got transferred to the west side, you know, and... Um, over there, the West Side, and I went to a school over there called 104 because I got transferred from 146 to 104. 146 was on the East Side. 140, 104 was on the West Side. So when I went, when I went to when I went to the school, there was an art class that I was in, and as I was there, I was like, I'm gonna have to get adjusted to the block, and I don't want them calling me what they called me uh, in my old area. So when I was in art class, you know, I um. They had some lettering. So I put together some lettering, right? And said, you know, and, and, and um it said uh I put together I put it I put together some lettering that said Sasa. So I said, this fool, I want them to call me. And I also had told myself I wanted that person to be somebody. You know, I want to make something out of it. You know, I had told myself I want to get some sort of reputation. I didn't know what it was, but the reputation that I want, was looking forward to was going to be that name. Right. And lo and behold, it be, I became a B-boy with that name. That's how that happened. That's an awesome story on how you, you first got your name. Yeah, because I didn't want, on the new block, I said, um, new block, new me. 
Right. So let me um start a new chapter. Let me start a new chapter. And Sasa, and, I, and, I, and then I thought Sasa was unique. And I told myself I had to do something with that name, even if it was popular for playing basketball, fighting, or whatever. I had to make something out of that name. That's why I changed my name, because it was a new chapter. Awesome. Awesome. Go, going back to, to your mother, do you know what year it was when she moved to New York City from the South? Uh, in the 50s. In the 50s? And do you remember any, did she share any stories of the South, her old hometown before New York City with you? Something you want to share with us? No. No? She didn't. All right. All right. Where in the Bronx, what neighborhood are you from? In the Bronx? What, uh, east side or west side? All right. What's, what's your original? You, you first came to the east side, right? Well, um, right. Okay. Because okay, you're saying in the Bronx, but I'm just saying I was in Harlem first. Okay. So I'm on 10th Street and 7th Avenue. So when I moved to the Bronx, the first place I had moved to in the Bronx was uh, 3rd Avenue near Franklin Avenue, near the Army. There's an armory on Franklin. I lived on Third Avenue just before you hit Franklin, and then you know, I, and then at that time I lived over there. There was a Third Avenue L. There was an L up there, right? So um, I lived right. I lived in that area, and I just had so much fun in that area. And then we used to. Then at that time, there was actually um, uh, 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 what you call the Army people's. National Guard. Right. There was a bunch of National Guard that used to come out there, and then they used to come out there with real helmets, real trucks. They had their guns, and then it was amazing. We used to still stand there and watch them go by, watch them go by. They had real jeeps, everything military to the T they had in that army before it came a shelter. Right. So that was one place that I had uh, a lot of fun at, man. You know, we had a lot of fun. Then I moved to the west side and had even more. All right. Well what year was it when you left the east side around the, the uh, Kingsbridge Armory? What year was it? At the end of 72. The end of 72? At the end of 72, yeah. Because oh. I remember that uh, kind of vividly because the Knicks had won a couple of championships. So, you know, I was like, yeah, you know. So. All right. So we're in Kingsbridge, 1972. You know, we know that there's a lot of National Guard activity. But what's your neighborhood like? What are the people like when you come out on the streets in 1972 in Kingsbridge? Oh, man. Um, we had mentors. Uh, we had people that, um, you know, uh, make sure, like our, uh, the, the parents of our friends, they would watch us like we were the dead kids. They make sure that we tried to stay on the straight and narrow. They would tell our mom that we did something, something bad or whatever. And then, um, you know, yeah, so um, it was a community. We was tight, you know. Everybody knew each other, you know. And um, I don't know, and then it was weird that we would uh, show each other how to fight. We'd play football. We'd play Skelzy. We'd, we'd play um, Ring of Levia to the point where that um, Ring of Levia, and then Manhunt. And then Manhunt sometimes we would play, right? And it was weird that um, if you ain't catch the person, right, um, Sometimes, like the next day, and you ain't catch the person, and, and then they see the person who they after, and they don't see them, and it's the next day they go tag on them and everything. <laughs> so sometimes this manhood will last to the next day. Right, right. And so, and I'm saying, like say for instance, we had um Alexander's was was, was on Hunt 49th Street, right, right, right down. Right. Like say for instance, if Sometimes we would go that far. The manhunt was was crazy. Like like we living on Third Avenue, like 165th Street, 167th Street, and then you on 149th Street, and then we go on looking for you. Yo, it was crazy. It was called man. Right. <laughs> but we did things like that, man. Um, and, and, and I don't know. We played touch football. We had we used to race cars. Oh man, we did a lot of things, man. You know, yeah, we did a lot of things. Okay, Be before we skip on over to your second residence on the west side, where, do you have any memories or, or, or any recollections of gangs in your neighborhood over in that area? Yeah, I mean, being that you got to that, I wasn't going to speak on it, but um, yeah, we had gangs. We had a gang on the block. Um, um, we had older guys. We had older guys, like, uh, on the block. And I, I was the leader of the gang called uh, the Seven Aces. We were the Seven Aces, right? 
and um, you know, we used to fight. Uh, you know, we used to go battle. We used to battle um, uh, uh, the baby spades because there was a bunch of a bunch of black spades, and then the older guys from us was the black pearls. There was the black pearls called the black pearls, right? And um, so that's the thing where um, so seven aces as, as the young guys we used to protect our block. If you come on out, if Boston Road would come on our block trying to start trouble, you know, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll rumble, they call it the rumble, too. we'll rumble, and then they, they let them know we're standing up for our block, and um, I don't know, it was just a, it was, it was a gang environment, man. Right. Right. Wow. wow. Now, when you moved from the east side at Kingsbridge area over to the west side, your second residence, mm -hmm. what neighborhood was that? Talk to us about that neighborhood. Oh, that neighborhood was on a lev another level. I don't know if you really want to but anyway, anyway, go ahead. that was on another level. These guys was basically, um, how can I say, um, when I went to, to the West Side, I ran into a bunch of people who appear to be a little more mature for their age. Mm -hmm. a, a, a little more mature for their age. They was, they was more advanced in um, becoming a man as far as with money, women, um, even material things. They was more up on material things. And um, how can I say, uh, when I moved to the West Side, I, it kind of um, stopped quickly for me to come outside and play. Okay. I wasn't coming outside to play no more. Because like when I was on the East Side, I would come out, you know, we come outside to play. We wasn't coming outside to play on the West Side. What neighborhood? We were about that? making money. Which streets or neighborhoods was that? Just up Featherbed Lane, Nelson. Got it, got it. Yeah, we was we was about making money, man, and um not hurting nobody or anything. And um and then we even would get together and some of our friends from the area would be on forty second street with the three card Marley. God. And we was look we was younger, so but they knew us. We look out for each other. So we'll go on forty second to try to go to the movies and sneak in the back of the movies to see the movie if we didn't have the money. Sometimes we had money, you know, we go see um uh, uh, tunnel vision, YouTube. I'm um, just having to go, um, something too, but whatever. We used to love those things, and so it was weird that now when we come around here, they would be doing the three card Marley. So, this is how we start putting a little money up. They would just do three card Marley, and so they see it. They say, What your brats doing over here? and then we would say, We come to we come see the movie. They say, You want to make some money? and we go, Yeah, so they help us watch out while they do the three card Marley. So, we would, you know, we would make our money, and then. After then, we wouldn't sneak in the movie no more. We would get money from the three cards, you know, their parents were looking out. And then we would play our way in the movie, you know, and then, like, I'm just saying, that's 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 another way we got us uh, into um, looking at finance more than, than to just come outside and play. All right. All right. Now, when was the, uh, the first time you saw someone breaking? The first time it ever, you've ever seen it? What was your impression? I was wow, this guy is nice. But um my impression, see, I was a natural dancer. Like, I wouldn't even have to see nobody start. I just love music. The music that because look, this is what happened to me. When I was in Harlem, and then I had my family in Harlem, right? Um, as I was telling you, right, there was a um a radiator from the floor to the ceiling. And when music come on, what I would do. What my family would tell me, you know, what I would do, when I hear the music, I would crawl to the pole. And then I would climb, I would, I would let the pole, I would hold on to the pole to have me stand up. Uh -huh. And when music were playing, and my family said, especially Chubby Checker. So when um, the music would play, I just started doing the switch. And then especially when Chubby Checker was on, I must have seen my, I must have seen my family uh, um, doing the twist. So I would climb the pole. I couldn't walk. I couldn't walk. I crawled. And then when the music come on, I started doing the twist. And they would just, girl, it was hilarious. They would just start laughing and everything. Because they like, this guy can't even walk. But when you hear music, he's getting up there and dancing. So they like, wow, wow, wow. And then that right there showed that I had some dancing in me. And so, so I'm just telling you from the beginning, I was a natural dancer. Right. Now, but what inspired me with um 
taking it to another level and everything was James Brown. Okay. I seen James Brown. I like this guy at that age. I said, this guy is, is nice. This guy, <laughs> and then I seen other people as well. You know, you could even come in there with Gene Kelly and all this whole type of stuff, you know, just, just how they move and everything. But James Brown to me was the ultimate with what he did. Like uh he seemed like he took it to another level. And then when he came walk and then and then um did the helicopter, <coughs> you know, and you know, it was just crazy. And then he come he spin up and then I was like, Yeah, you know, um so I took some moves with him and also implemented my own move. And then it was where my sister used to mess with um this gang, the Black Pearl, and I would be in the clubhouse with them, and then they would start dancing and stuff, and then they start doing moves, and I got some moves from them, and I implemented into what I did, and then again I start going from this, and, and, and um at the end, at the end of, of school they would have parties, so like I would I would and then when they play music and everything I would dance. And the, and the teacher would be fascinated. She would go and get other teachers and bring them back to my class. She would go to other teachers and bring them back to my class, right? And just to show them me dancing. They say, look at this guy, look at that guy. So then, so, so, so um, from the third grade up until the fifth, because I left in the fifth, they would bring, they, you know, when we had parties, they'd bring the teacher and they all would sit down and watch me dance. They would like me because they would be fascinated. All right. So um, after I left there, after I left the school, after I left the school, and then, I, and then you know, because I went to um, 104 for one year on the sixth grade. It was weird that that's where I formed the name Sasa in, 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 in um, the sixth grade because I left in the fifth grade mm -hmm. in 146. So, um, and then, like, it was weird that. When I went to junior high school and whatnot, they would give talent shows. So they gave a talent show uh, in seventh grade because it went up to the eighth grade. The ninth grade was high school. You go to um, tab, I'm the tab. So um, in seventh grade, I won the talent show, right? Now, um, in eighth grade, it was a big presentation that this guy going there in Sasa because now they knew me in the area, all around the area. So now it was a big thing for me to dance. Yo, Sasa going there, Sasa going there. So um, it was weird that um, I was the the highlight, you know, of the talent show the next year because now people know my name from a, being you know, dancing all around. And then again, there's another thing too. My grandmother used to be fascinated. She used to have her church members come over to the house at night and bring they look they they grandkids and their grandsons and my moms would wake my grandmas would wake me up to challenge these these guys because they would say no my grandson is better than you I mean, they know my grandson is better than you yeah well you bring them over these is grandmothers now this ain't even my mother so um it's weird that now we we in there we 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 doing it and they laughing at them they laughing at them and the thing the thing also too is where that sometimes I had to go to school. I got to go to school in the morning. But here my grandmother um, waking me up to dance with one of her church members. But I can't say nothing. I can't say, hey, 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 mom, I got to go to school tomorrow. So, so that's another way I got into battling too. Got it. Got it. Now, but before you, we, we get to you attending your first DJ Cool Hurt party. What venues, what clubs, what places did you go in and dance and break at? Basement, house parties, because I was too young to go to the big party. Right, right. See what I'm saying? So it would be house parties, basements, and that's where I started getting the name, when people was giving parties in basements. And then, you know, I would attend, because, you know, I was able to go in there, but I heard you had to be older. You know what I mean? This is the older crowd. I was, I was like the youngest in Hurts. You know what I'm saying? It was me and this guy called the twin. The twins, me and twins were the youngest, but they're older than me. They're a little older than me by like four or five months. <clears throat> Kevin and Keith. Kevin and Keith, right. So um it was weird that like we were the youngest there, but I'm just letting you know how young I was. See, I'm saying I couldn't get right, into right. any of these parties. But the reason I really got in, I think I was 13. You know, I think you had to be 14 and, uh, and 15 and all that. But the reason I got in is because when I came around the area, the person I met that ended up being my best friend was Porky. His name was Porky. Okay. And that was Copeland Rock's brother. 
That was Coconut Rock Thugger. So if, if they was going to let Porky in, they were going to let me in. And, you know, it was weird that Porky would tell his brother and would tell friends that, you know, I just recently meet, met that he used to tell them, but see, a lot of the, the, the guys that was already breaking, like Trixie, Wallace, they were older than me, right? So Porky used to tell his brother, and he used to tell some of my friends that none of them guys could mess with me. He, he, was, he used to tell them, but I didn't know it. Somebody told me later, a guy named Butch, Butch LaRock. Butch used to say, Porky used to come and say, yo, none of them guys can mess with this dude. None of them guys can mess with this dude. And then they used to look at him like, what are you talking about, man? You know, this and that, this and that. He said, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. So when I went to a party, I started, and he proved himself right there, though. They said, yeah. So after it was all over, they were like, yeah, that guy can go, man. They got to go. And then so with that, even that then I had some older people kind of jealous of me because I was so young. And I was getting so much nowhere about variety that, you know, they came after me. Got it, got it. So who were the B-boys that you knew of that had reputations when you began? Who oh, was man. already on the scene? Or not B-boys, Breakers. Breakers. And, then I, and, and may I tell you, um, they was calling it Burning. Got like it. When I was doing it in the basements and stuff like that, they was calling it um, Burning. And then eventually it became Breaking. They said, going to break tonight, going to break tonight. And then I think the media added dancing. Because we used to say, yo, we breaking the night, we breaking, yeah, yeah. And then I think the media added dancer, break dancer, you know? Um, so um oh man, some of the hottest cats, um, you know, uh one was Trixie. Uh uh the greatest I ever seen was Chubby. This yo, this dude was phenomenal. His name was Chubby, man. You remember Chubby? Oh, wait, 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 and, and Wallace, and um, um, Seiko, um, and, and who else was hot, man? Um, well, I mean, you know, um, dad, um, um, because a lot of cats came later. Yeah, yeah, of course. You understand? Of course. So you just say who was, who was hot at that time. Yeah, I want to know who was hot before you and during your time. Trixie, Chubby, Clark came later. See, that's what I'm saying. Clock was. He became number two. He was he was nice, but he came later. Um, Chubby was hot, man. You know, Chubby, ch um, none of them could mess with Chubby. None of them were tricky. None of them could mess with the dude named And Wallace. Wallace was was amazing, too. And then you had Dancing Dog. You had Dancing Dog. He was up there, too. You know? Yeah. So these are the guys that were being highlighted before I came in the picture. But then when I came in the picture, you know, I have a love for, I have a, I had really love for music. So when I get there, I start dancing. I ain't care what you think. I ain't care if you jump in. I don't care. I just wanted to dance. That's how I express myself. And, um, you know, I start getting big crowds and people start hearing about me. And, you know, some people just got envy and didn't want to challenge me. Right, right. I read somewhere that, that you stopped breaking at around 77. Yeah, after the blackout, basically. Got it, got it. Yeah. And th th well, that's, that's a good frame of, frame of reference, you know, of it. You know, to have. So when did you start? You know, was it 71 to 77, 70 to 77? When did you start breaking? Hey, um, well, battling. Burning, breaking. Um, battling. I don't, um, battling, I would say, um, hurts. Because they came at me at hurts. Okay. Like, I would dance at, um, uh, basement. I had some people, then I, I, I would finish people's off quickly, right? Mm -hmm. To the point where when I did it in basements and people see me in basements, nobody wanted to challenge me anymore. So that was a wrap. It was a wrap. So now when I got the hurts, it was a whole new adventure. So they never see me like the people that they heard of me, but they figure I'm too young. I don't know nothing anyway. So um, it was weird that well now when I started getting like like heating heating battles, is that hurts? Okay, all right. And so then, and, and then also. Other places too. I didn't only dance at Hertz. Of course, you know Concord Village, um, a uh, 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 Webster Recreation Center. Um, you know what I'm saying. So, um, yeah. and then my friends would my friends would bring me places as well. My friends, I turn out because they say, "You, hey, we gonna bring you, we gonna bring you, we gonna bring you such and such place, and we want you to turn out." That's 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 what they used to call it too. Got turning it. out. All right. So when was 
Can you talk to me about your memory of the very first time you attended a DJ Cool Hurt party? And where was it at? Where it was at 1520 Century. And um, it was where that I went in there and the music was so exotic, man. You know, and, and to speak, everything was so clear. It seemed like the band was on the stage, right? I, I couldn't help myself, you know. Um, like in church, like they say the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. I would actually feel the Holy Ghost and just just go off. I didn't, you know. I I just I just love the fact of the of the music being um so clear and and so vibrating, you know. So um, I would just go off. I would just go off and just uh, people would crowd around me and they was impressed, you know. So it, it inspired me to continue. Awesome. Let me, what music, what songs was DJ Cool Hurt playing when you he were was playing? He was playing songs that like hardly nobody was playing. And he was playing songs that was popular. He was playing anything that was a hit. And then things that wasn't a hit, which made it unique. Now you had people coming from all over to hear these different sounds that this man is playing that other people just not playing. So now he's bringing in people who's going to be um, future DJs from hearing his sound and looking at his sound system. So he was inspiring a lot of DJs at that time. And the music that he was playing, uh, 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 Mexican, uh, Just Begun, um, Baby Huey, um, Jimmy Castor, James Brown. Um, and then he was playing uh, other music of uh, bands and singers that I can't recall. I don't know their name because for a simple reason, a lot of people didn't know their name because he, he was the first to play it. Right. But there was a guy where I found out that now people just catching on to the Herc sound was this guy called Mr. Magic. When he first came um, on the radio, his name was Mr. Magic. He started playing stuff that Herc played. And then later on, radio stopped playing with Herc after they found out, you know, about the phenomenon. Then they started playing uh, uh, stuff that Herc played. And I was like, I was like, man, Herc made it. He finally made it. Cause down here in the radio playing stuff that Herc played that they never played before. But then it, it used to, the people that used to play music that Hurt played, it'd be a special edition, such as Mr. Magic. You look up Mr. Magic, he was like one of the first people that came on the radio and played. At that time, it was called Underground. It basically was Underground. Mm -hmm. And then it became hip hop. But the un reason it was called un Underground because uh, places like dis discos and stuff wasn't really rocking like that. They wasn't rocking like that. You know, they was playing uh, Donna Summers or whatever, you know, Spring Up there. You know, they had some good stuff too, don't get me wrong. But the, the music that moved your feet, um, it was underground. Awesome. Now, that moved your feet, that made you what we call wig out. That you made know. you wig out. <laughs> Do you recall at Cool Herc's party, Cool Herc, his presence, what was he doing? How did he you know, move the crowd. He was a, talk to me about Cool Herc. He was amazing present because he was so big. You know what I mean? And um, how can I say? Um, he he was different. You know what I mean? And um, he had a goal. You know to um make this party thing a phenomenon. He, you know he had it in him to make it. He didn't care. He was going to be determined to succeed and make it a phenomenon. And that's what he did. He was determined. Like all his money, everything was going there. He ain't, he ain't care what was going on. Like, I mean, he'll participate, but his mind was on his party. And then he used to write at first. And then how he found out how to um, make these parties so exciting and everything like that, where he actually got an idea from, it was a church party over there on University Avenue and John, and John Brown party. He was at John Pratt, and then he seen uh, people burning and stuff like that because he used to dance. He was a break dancer at her. But then, you know, he wasn't great at it. <clears throat> Excuse me. He just did it because sometimes he get the feeling. 
you know, he could feel that he want you know, want to go, and he liked dancing. But he wasn't a great dancer, but he was a good dancer. He wasn't a great dancer, but he found out that he was better. He was a better DJ than great dancer. Got it, got it. Do Do you recall your most memorable battle at a DJ Cool Heart party? Who'd you battle? Chubby. Chubby. He was amazing, man. Can you and, talk to us about that battle? Well, what had happened, Chubby was amazing. It was like this. Chubby was amazing, right? And um, Trixie was amazing. They was on top of the chain when I came. These two cats was on the top of the chain, right? So it was weird that um, Trixie, he got tired of hearing about me. And he had a friend bring him up to my school and challenge me, right? So Trixie challenged me. So me and him, you know, uh, we battled in a place called a Twilight Zone. I defeated him, right? Um, so now Chubby, it seemed like Trixie and Chubby, they respected each other. So they didn't try to um, battle one another. They never made an attempt to dance with one another because I guess they had too much respect for one another. So when I defeated Trixie, um, Chubby felt like this is my this uh, this is my time now. This is Sasa. This is my time. You know that okay, I'll get him. So now after going through the heat, after going to um the Twilight Zone, I think the heat blow a little bit. Um, <clears throat> her traced back to fifteen twenty Cedric. He just gave a little something there. You know, like like uh, he went back there. You know, um um uh, just for the fun of it. Gotcha. You know, go back there and gave a little party and whatnot, right? Just for the fun of it. And um, there is where Chubby figured that he'll catch up with me and he'll get to me. So when he went back to the 15, just to gave a little special little party out there, you know, for old, old time's sake. Chub, Chubby comes through the door with around seven guys, you know, here in front. He, he, he come busting through the door and say, Where's Sasa? I want Sasa. So Herc said, he's over there. So Herc caught on all the lights because usually the lights is on, you know, and we party in the dark. Mm -hmm. We party in the dark, you know, we having fun. He demanded you cut on, cut on the light because he was going to let, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> he was going to let everybody know that I couldn't mess with him that he's the one that's supposed to be number one because he wanted to be number one. Trixie was number one, but he didn't challenge Trixie. But he figured since I was number one, and excuse me, yeah, he figured since I was number one, that he was going to get to me. So he challenged me right there. So everybody stopped. And the party was packed. Me and him was on the middle of, in the middle of the floor. And, you know, Chubby used to be flipping. Chubby used to be flipping and everything, right? He used to flip. He used to do a flip and everything before they were doing acrobats. Chubby used to be flipping them and doing all that all that type of stuff. And it's the thing where um all right, so um we got in the middle of the floor and we started dancing and we went at it. We went at it. And I am I'm, I'm telling you, you know, um I knew he was nice, but I had to stand up for who for what I knew. So to make a long story short. I, you know, I beat him, I burnt him, and, you know, I kept my title. And the matter of fact, is where that I retired the number one, um, number one, you know. See, um, I had people come at me, but after a while, people stopped challenging me. They just wanted to see me. And it was a pleasure, so I said, well, I ain't got to risk burning you. So they just wanted to see me. People stopped challenging me after a while. Like, they would hear about me, and some said, I'll get him. I'll get them. They come to the party uh -huh. and they see me, then they say, nah, nah, <laughs> I ain't messing with him. I ain't messing with him. Because some people came around, you know, to, to be, if they would have beat me, they would have been number one. Right. But then, you know, after a while, you know, people start coming around and then people who work on child me, they, they got a, a good look and they said, nah, nah, nah. So um, I had a few more battles. Um, you know, I had, I had quite a few more bad, but but not a lot, not as much, if, not as much if, if people wouldn't respect mm -hmm. my skill. Got it. 
Yeah, so got it. I had now, a lot of people after a while didn't even want to even want to all they, all they want to do was see me. All right. Now you, you talk about battling individuals, right? You were breaking until seventy seven, right? So did you battle you talked about baby spades. Do you recall battling baby spades or Zulu Kings, those two crews? Nah, nah, nah. When Zulu King used to come to Hurt, they used to admire us. Got it. You know, because Hurt was the mecca of great dancing. So and when you came to Hurt, you had to be on the top of the line. Your game had to be together. You had to be polished, or else you was going to be embarrassed because Hurt had the biggest crowds. See what I'm saying? So that meant that, you know, he had a significant amount of people where that was there, if you got burnt, people would be talking about how you got burnt all over the place. Right. And then if you won, people would talk about how you won all over the place. So when you come to Hurt, you got a reputation. Got it. Because he used to shout you out on the mic and everything like that. Got it. Now, Zulu Kings, Baby Spades, there were other crews, uh, especially, you know, up until 77 that, that aren't, that didn't make it to the 80s. Star Child of Rock, Rockwell Association, TDK, the Mexican crew. Did you battle any of those Casanova guys? Casanova crew and all that. All right, yeah, please. You know, any other crews that I left out from the beginning? Nah, there was crew that was coming, okay. but, they, but they just watched. They just watched us. Uh-huh. And, then, and then some, some you know, participate in battling, but um, they got burned. They got beat. Got it, got it. You know, um, with guys like um, Wallace, Johnny Cool, um, Bobo, you know, they got burnt. Right. <laughs> got it. Got it. So, they got burnt. B-Boy, what does the B and B-Boy mean as you know it? Well, I asked her, I actually uh, looked at it as uh, break, because that's what we was doing. So I thought it was break, boy. And, you know, um, some people who, who um, different terminologies at this point, like um, some people use Bronx boys, um, right, right, break boys, and something else. I don't know too many terminologies because I just went with break boy. Got and um, I never asked her, and he never told me what the B stands for Got because it. I was a, I was a, I was a, a break dancer, and then when he started saying B boy, I was like, what's that? What's the B boy? I'm thinking it's like some some sort of clown, you know, like a you know, you make it seem like you're a clown, B boy. So I didn't really accept it because I was so used to breaking, right. you know, being a break, you know, breaking. I was so used, but he implemented and it took off. And then after a while, you know, I got comfortable with it because everybody started saying, "Hey, ain't one B boy salsa." So I got comfortable with it after a while. But after about that terminology, I was like, it don't sound too good. I hear you. Are you now? Breaker, seventy three to seventy seven. What is what is a breaker doing? What kind of dancing is he doing? He's obviously he's getting it from burning, you know. Well, we're doing the helicopter. All right. We're doing the freeze. We're doing sort of flips. Um, we're doing robots where it it, it um turns into the electric boogie like the robot we were doing and stuff like it turned into the electric boogie pop, you know, stuff like that. But um, we were doing the robot. We were doing um, the helicopter, and then we the one that started to freeze. You know, when we danced, and then you see them, and then they freeze. That was us. We started that to freeze, and um, you know, flips. Um, and then again, I made up my own stuff from on the floor. I, you know, uh, I was that control on the floor. I, I implemented my own stuff, which um, really had me. We considered, you know, this B boy thing, you know, for what I was doing, you know, like yeah, man, you know, um, it was the um, it, it, it was the epitome, you know, of being a B boy with what I was doing because I was like the thing with me. Now I'm advancing dancing, so now I'm making up my own stuff to the point where I don't have to watch anybody no more. You know what I'm saying? Only I don't have, now I can make up my own stuff, and they and they would have to learn from me if they could do it. But um, it was where I was implementing my own stuff and everything like that. And when you hot, when you was a hot dancer, I make sure I watch you because I figured you was the person that's gonna come after me. You was the person that's gonna want to take my spot, so I would watch you. I, anybody that was coming up, even if they wasn't 
Even if they wasn't coming up, I had a love. I had a love for the dance. I have a love for so I would watch you anyway, even if you dance. I would I could have a love for it. But the thing is, a lot of times I would I would um I would watch certain people and if they hot, just to see if they coming up, I'll know how they move. And I could capitalize on their moves. Like for instance, like I could watch you, I I could do my homework. So when I dance with Trixie, Trixie used to get a momentum. He used to pull out a fake penis. All right? He pulled out a fake penis. Yeah, that's, that's how insulting he was. Okay. But he get momentum and then, and then dance with it to the music. So I figure I'm not I'm not a person with tricks. I'm about dancing. But I can do tricks. But I, I used to be thinking like, you know, I looked at him when I used to see that, like, tricks trick is for kids, you silly rabbit. That's 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 how I looked at him. So when he pulls it out, this is how I used to do my research and observe of the dances. We put that. I started dancing. I pulled out a pair of scissors, huh. and and then you know um, I, I, I I I emphasize, you know, emphasize whatever um, that I cut it. Uh -huh. Once I once once I showed them that I cut it, the crowd went crazy because they knew that I cut it. So therefore, I shut them down. Now we had to dance. No more tricks. His name was Tricksy anyway. No more tricks. Now we had to dance. And that's what I felt I had him. Right? So um that because you have to dance now. I I, I cornered you. You gotta dance now. No more tricks. The tricks is gone. So that's how I studied him. Now, Clark Kent, there's a dude named Clark Kent. He was going, he was number two. He was on my tail, right? He was coming at me. He came at me one time. We danced. We danced. He did a move. Then I did a move. And then I spun up from the ground and just looked at him. And he looked at me. And it was his turn. He never went. So the people I was with said, come on. He don't want nothing. And then as, as I walked away, he just looked at me walk, and he never, he never moved. So, I, so he, he might have lost his heart. You know what I mean? He might have lost his heart. So now... I told him to tell Herc, because he was number two at the time. I told Herc, I, I told him to tell Herc to put up a prize, me and him going dance. And at that time, I thought it was great because, you know, Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier, they were, they had, you know, they would, and the prize was crazy. So I'm like, yo, this would be like Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier. So I'm looking at that, I'm looking at the prize, man. We get older, I need money now. So I told Clark that for the simple reason. Clock did a thing like Superman, right? And did he did a thing like Count Dracula? Now, I studied him. When he if he would have went into the Superman, I had this green thing that glowed. So if he would have went into the Superman, now <clears throat> if he would have went into the Superman, I was gonna pull out the glowing ball like Kryptonite. So when he would have went into the Superman, I was gonna pull out the Kryptonite. You know, and then I'm going to do moves and just, just put it in his face to shut down the Superman, right? So now, he had another move, Count Dracula. He had, he had, he had a move like Count Dracula, come to you and he bites your neck. But it was all with the music. It was nice. I had a cross. So if he would have did the Count Dracula, I was going to get in my move, you know, spin, come up with him and put, the, and put the cross in his face. What what do Dracula do when you put the cross in place? He falls back. He walk. So that was how I would do. That would be my studying studying place. And and then again, like I, I, there was this one guy that did the did, did a nice robot. So I felt like I was going to make sure. I, like like anytime he would do that, I was going to make sure like I had a little screen. And then anytime like I'm working him, you know. I, I, I attach the swing to him, and, he, and he's doing all that. I'm making, sure, I'm, I'm acting like I'm guiding him. You know, as he do that, shut him down. See what I'm saying with the robot? Because now it look like I'm the battery to his robot. Right, right. And so they're like, oh wow, wow. So you talked to us about, you know, what Breakers did from '73 to '77. What's the difference between the Breaker and the B-Boy? Well. A friend of mine explained, and um, I thought uh, 
their uh, their theory of it uh, 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 was copacetic, and and then this is my theory. It's a way uh, rendition or whatever you want to say. It, it's where that I think the beat boy hit the floor more, and um they dance to the music more. You know they they dance to the music more and they hit the floor more. So I think um how can I say? I don't know. I feel like I don't know. Maybe a b-boy is a little more polished, or that's the only difference, you know, really, is just that um, one uh, specialized in dance to the music and hitting the floor more than the break dancer. A break, a, a, a break dancer, like, you know, sometimes they'll be off rhythm, you know, but they be breaking. <laughs> got it, got it. Now you you had gave us a little a little story about uh, Trixie coming and looking for you. Yeah, to battle. Yeah, I was in junior high school. He's in high school. Right, you were telling he's, me he's much older. Yeah, yeah. Now and he told me he was gonna feed me to the dogs once he beat me. <laughs> yeah, he just came and just tried to disturb me. You know, gotcha. I was on my lunch break. The, the the fact that a high school kid went to a middle school to, to says enough. Yeah, you know, uh, that, that's awesome. You know, so. Do you recall any routines, any memorable routines that you did that you want to talk to us about? You know, any certain moves that you did that just stand out like, yeah, you know? Well, I used to have, um, I used to do a lot of spins and, and, and pull up. And um, I used to have this one move, you know, where that I hit the floor, I put myself up, right? like. I go to the floor, I pull myself up, you know, spin around do the robot. But um a lot of my a lot of my stuff was made up floor move where that it it wasn't no act or anything. It was just skill, skillful, you know. And um I was like control you with the skill that I that I made up, but it wasn't it, it wasn't um I didn't have a name for it, but I had I, when I did that right like there, that was something I did, but I had a one thing called uh, the rubber band man, right? Um, it was where that, you know, I would be doing rubbery, you know, doing rubbery thing and then, and then, then act like I'm, I'm, I'm moving, I'm moving my body, you know, with a string or something like that, you know, moving and hit the floor and then I had a brim. So when I act like I'm, I'm moving myself with strings or whatever, and, and, and you know, I go down, I come and I had a hat, you know, I was flipping, I flipped my hat up. The flip, I had a, a brick. So I would flip it, curl it on, then look at you and just, just go through. See, I used to dance from impulse. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. To the point where I had moves that I would do, but a lot of moves I would dance from, from, from hearing the music. But um, I had certain moves that I would do in battle, and it would be in my mind. See, I, I don't know at all, because it been so long ago. I would write them down. And when I'm in battle, I will go through these moves that, that I would call power moves, right? So I had them on that, and then I would have them in my mind. And for, you know, I won't forget or do the same thing, and where I'll be continuously doing different things, I also had a photographic memory. So as I'm dancing with them or whatever, I think of these different moves where I can go right into them. And if they didn't have time to go into a new move or switch up, I'll get the momentum because I'm constantly doing different things, going into different things where people's now is just their eyes is on me because I'm going through different things. Mm -hmm. And if you ain't going through, uh, if, if you ain't going through different things, they won't get tired of looking at you. And um, I'm going to get the momentum, so I'm gonna have better chances uh, of, of winning. And I actually used to. I uh, only do that when I'm battling, so I can go into one move into another. So I would have a list, and then I, it would be a photographic memory, and I would practice them. I would practice them in my grandmother's living room. But other than that, like when I'm just don't have to battle, or I, I don't have to um, try to uh, protect that number one spot or whatever. I just freestyle. You know, I be freestyling. But other than that, I have my moves planned. But I can, if I won't want out of moves, and if you didn't have a bunch of moves, and then and then again too, we dance the whole record. Like say for instance, it's like three rounds. If you win one, I win one. 
And then the third one, you know, whoever win that wins that. But a lot of time, mine would be two and out. I would beat you um both rounds. Mm -hmm. And um in in a way that I always had moves. I, I used to call it my arsenal. What I had in my arsenal. Got it. Got and, then, and, and then like I said, be photographed for memory, what I write down. The rubber man man was one. And it was a tough and, and, and uh the guy in the booth. Right, people would probably say, well, because Clark Kent used to act like he was in a phone booth, then he changed his clothes, because back then, you know, um, Superman came from, you know, changed clothes in the telephone booth. So Clark would um, act like he coming out the telephone, and I had one called, um, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a booth man, where that, you know, I, I make like I'm going inside the mm -hmm. telephone booth. Y'all probably, y'all don't know about the, um, the, <laughs> the telephone booth. Well, you know, they go, I don't. But anyway, um, I'll make like I'm going inside the telephone, telephone booth, right? And I and, 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 and I pick up the phone, right? And and um, make it seem like I pick up the phone, somebody saying something on the other end, and they saying something obscene. So I would look at it like, I would look at it like a phone like that, and then I would act like I'm hanging up on them. Like, what? I ain't trying to hear it. And I hang up. So, I, so once I hang up, I drop to the floor and start spinning up and everything and then come up. And that would be the act, though. Like, you know, somebody said something I've seen on the other end. And then after I go through it, you know, how I said, um, like, they would say something I've seen. And then I go I go on the floor. Like, I, like but it, it'll be, um, you know, a uh, nice, accurate move with style and everything. But basically, after the person, after I heard the person say, it's basically like I had a tantrum. Uh -huh. You know, I have to say, yeah, you're not going through a little tantrum, but it'd be you know, all in style, you know. Mm -hmm. You can't come back up and like, yeah, you know what I mean? So, got it, got it. Yeah. Now, you just did a freeze. You were talking about freezes, yeah. right? Yeah, when was we, the first time you recall doing a freeze? What year? Like 75. All right. Late 75, and that's when B Boy was implemented. Late 74 to early 75, or 75, B-Boy was implemented. You know, I really think the 75, but sometimes we say the end of 74. It wasn't the middle of 74. B-Boy wasn't implemented in the middle of 74. You know, it had to be at the end of 74 and the beginning of 75. But I'm going with B-Boy was implemented in 75, man. Perfect. Perfect. That's when Herb started saying. Got it. Got it. Now, you also mentioned uh, power moves. What do you mean by power moves? What what were those power moves? Moves that was uh, phenomenal, that would um, impress people, have people's uh, faces all. I would like I would do power moves, right? And I had friends that would watch other people watch me. They say sometimes I do the power move that their jaws would be just open, like <laughs> it'd be like that. Um, some of my friends used to tell me. You used to tell me, like, some people would watch me and say, yo, that girl mouth was like this. You know, stuff like that. So the power move really impressed a lot of people, the power move. Because it was creative and it was, um, how can I say, it was awkward. And to do, and in order to do these certain power moves, you know, these, the power moves is the best move a breaker, a break dancer, or a b-boy had. God. That's their best move. God. You know what I mean? And I had a few of them. So I kept them in awe. I had a group power move um, for break beats, you know, where that, you know, I can really rock it, you know, like yeah, I rock that. So, um, I, you know, I had moves where I would, dang, I, I would fall on the floor. I fall on the floor, right, right, and then I had my leg backwards. I come up spinning. I fall back and then come forward and then pick myself up, stuff like that. Got it. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, but see, see, they ain't doing stuff like that. Like, you know, like I'm just saying right now, straight. I'm, I'm walking flat on, flat on, flat on my stomach, and then and then falling back and spinning up. Right. Like flat on your stomach, then, then, then falling flat like that and spinning up. They ain't doing stuff like that. Gotcha. Thank you. And and, and, and then doing the helicopter. Right. I'm doing the helicopter, and and, and when I do the helicopter, I stop. And, and then I go backwards, and then I put my I put my leg behind and then spin up, you know, from the helicopter. 
People wasn't doing that. Like when the hell, after you do the helicopter, you spin right. up. They wasn't doing that. Yeah. Well, I, I appreciate that because I actually I, I could actually visualize it as you were. Yeah, you I'm were too old to do it, it now. No, 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 I get you. Thank I you. I appreciate joining. that. Here's the tell you, I was double joining. So, like, anybody couldn't do those moves. Right. Unless you was double joining. Yeah. And I wish I could show you, man, because they ain't doing it now. All right. Matter of fact, some people want me to form a team and see can they do the move and show them some of the moves I used to do and see can they still do it. Got some it. we're talking about that now. Awesome, awesome. Well, we're limited on time for your mm -hmm. interview, so I'll get you know to some really uh, ending questions here. Paris, Summer 2024 Olympics. Tell me your impression about breaking, making it to that stage. Um, it's a great thing. Um, I didn't, I didn't think that it was going to be noticed as much as making it to the Olympics. And I'm glad I'm still around to see it. And um, it's uh, I, you know, I, I hold it dear to my heart that it that it reaches that far and to the point that it's still existing. And um, I don't know. I just feel good about it. And just um just feel blessed to have been a part of it to make it go that far. Awesome. You know, just feel blessed awesome. that it that I had something to do with it getting that far. And even though a lot of people don't know, I know and it makes me feel good. I don't care how they feel. You know what I mean? I don't care if they even know. I just know I know and how it makes me feel. Got it, got it. What what does the future of breaking or b boying look like to you? Where's it gonna go? Um, how can I say? As long as people continue to be creative, sky's the limit. As long as they continue to be creative, sky's the limit. Awesome, awesome. Before I get to the last question, is there anything that you wanted to say? You know that that you thought you might wanna, you know, give as part of this testimonial. Well, I'm just saying I appreciate everybody who contribute to. Of the hip hop culture, and um, for me to know, hey man, you know, um, keep hip hop alive, keep love, keep hip hop alive, keep love alive, and um, sky's the limit. Awesome. Yeah, and keep hip hop alive and love alive, and sky's the limit. Awesome, awesome. Our last question: What does the Bronx mean to you? The Bronx. Well, I'm on. I'm on to say a little something like this, man. I love the Bronx so much that um, I made a little rap about it, and it goes a little something like this: Go uptown, come down to the ground. You're landing in a place called the Boogie Down. We're representing hip hop pound for pound, better known for our versatile, our versatile, our unique style. Work on the street and with in concrete. A one B boy shots on y'all, yeah. Awesome, awesome. A1 B-Boy Sasa, thank you for this awesome history. Written in concrete. There you go. Peace, my brother. Thank you.